Hi everyone, in this video I will be going through Cisco Packet Tracer Activity 5.4.1.2 titled Skills Integration Challenge and to begin we'll open up the Cisco Packet Tracer and the instructions I'm gonna go ahead, I've run through this before so I'm gonna go ahead and do a reset on everything I'll clear out all the settings and I'm going to keep this open to the addressing table <coughs> I'm going to hit fast forward time, probably two or three times, just to let everything get um, booted up and initialized. And so what we're doing in this is we're going to set up this network so that we have communication across our VLANs and routing properly and connection connectivity from our PCs over to this Cisco.pka server. So to start, we're going to set up router 1 and switch 1 based on our addressing table. So let's start with router 1, and we'll go into the command line interface, and we'll set up interface G00. <coughs> we'll give it an IP address, 172.17.25.2. So that's G00, which looks like it's connecting over here on this side. If we hover over this, it should tell us G00. To G02, over here to the HQ. So we assign it that IP address and give it a no shut command. It may or may not need that. If it's not down, then it doesn't, but it never hurts to go ahead and use it anyways, just to make sure it's up. Then we'll come over to interface G01 and we'll give it a no shut command because G01 is connect back, gonna connect back to our switch. And so we're gonna set up sub-interfaces for our inter-VLAN routing on G01. So we'll go ahead and get started with that. G01.10, which is gonna be for VLAN 10. Has an I, well, we need to do encapsulation first. Encapsulation. Dot one Q for VLAN ten, and we want to give it an IP address. This will be the gateway address for computers on this network. And then we'll go over to set up another one for VLAN twenty. I'm kind of going to follow the same protocols here: encapsulation dot one q twenty and an IP address and another one for interface thirty and you can see with each of these it gives that command or the output showing that it's changed it up that's because we've just created it and just put it online so all we have to do is configure it So for VLAN 30, we also need to set the IP address for the default gateway. For that network, we'll go ahead and set it up for 88 and 99 as well. So go to interface G01.88, and they say to use in this activity 88 as the native VLAN. We'll take a look at that at the end. I believe that's actually what causes some problems. Um, when I started, I had completion at 99 of 100. I think with 88 as the native VLAN in the packet tracer activity, it causes connectivity problems. So we might change that to ensure we have connectivity. But we'll tackle that when we get to it. Assign it an IP address based off of our addressing table. And do the same thing for VLAN 99. Except it won't be native here. I think in the end we might make it native, but we'll see. 
Let's go ahead and give it an, an IP address. And again, that's based off of the addressing table. Alright, so that looks good. Once you've set all of that up on your router, we can hop over to the switch. And we'll start setting up our switch for these VLANs. So we'll start with VLAN 10. We'll name it faculty slash staff. VLAN 20 is named students. VLAN 30 named guest parentheses default with no space. VLAN 88, which is supposed to be the native. VLAN 99, which is supposed to be for management. Alright, so we've created these VLANs. Now we'll go in and we'll start assigning interfaces to the VLANs that we just created. So, it looks like we're going to do 11 through 17 for VLAN 10. 18 to 24 for VLAN 20. And we'll have to double check on 30. Oh, here we go. So 11 to 17 on 10, 18 to 24 on 20, and 6 through 10 on 30. start doing that. I'm going to start with VLAN 10, so we'll go to interface range, and we're going to set 11 through 17. Give it the switch port mode access, just to make sure it is in access mode. And then we'll do the switch port access VLAN 10. And then we'll go set up the range for VLAN 20. Switch port mode access again, just to make sure. And then the last one we're going to set up here is 6 through 10. For VLAN 30. Then we're going to go into... Uh, the VLAN 99, the management VLAN. And we can see that it needs to have this IP address assigned to it with 99.1 as the gateway. So let's go ahead and do that. IP address. 172.17.99.10 okay so we're good there going to set an interface for that VLAN. So we're going to go ahead and set up interface G01, which if we look back at our diagram, is the one that's going to be connected directly to our router. So we want to configure that for trunking. Switch port mode trunk. So it'll go down, reconfigure itself, and come back up as a trunk. Then we want to configure only the VLANs in our assignment table to be allowed across this trunk. So we'll do switch port native, VLAN is 88.
that interface and we want to just set up that default gateway. As it's showing us here. Oh, we should be doing that for VLAN 99. Okay. So let me back that up. Let's not put that for the entire gateway. Let's put it specifically for that interface VLAN 99. And then any ports that we have not assigned to a VLAN should be disabled. So this is going to be fast Ethernet 1 through 5 and the gigabit Ethernet port 2. So we're going to do interface range F01 through 5 and G0 slash 2. And we're going to give them a shutdown command. So now if we go and take a look, we should be showing 100% completion, showing that everything's been set up properly. And so we verify connectivity between R1, S1, and all the PCs. And we'll have to double check it for the server itself. So to do that, you can actually come into each one and do a ping from the desktop across, or you can just run a simple PDU. And your first one might fail, um, if it does, just delete it, run a second one, because it might have just been an ARP table issue where the ARP table was getting built first. And let's see if we have anything from the server. So we have server to PC1. Server to PC3 failed. Let's try it one more time. There we are, as it's just building these ARP tables. so we should have connectivity across the whole network here. If you notice that yours does not, you may need to go back into your um, switch and just change the native VLAN to 99. Um, when we were working on this before, for some reason having VLAN 88 as our native wouldn't actually allow any communication across. The PCs could all talk but we weren't getting anything over to the server. Setting up this time around, it seems like it works fine with VLAN 88 as the native. So that's something I do not have an answer for. Looks like it's working now, so we'll just go with it. Um, as always, if you have any questions or comments, please feel free to leave them below. Other than that, I will see you all in my next video.